Hey guys, how you doing? JP Saricolia here and welcome again to Age of Heroes. Thank you for taking time. Thank you for listening to the podcast, whether if you're listening through iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, CastBox, TuneIn, uh, through all the different platforms available, but also to those who are watching YouTube, thank you for taking time. I do appreciate that uh, you do take that time, that weekly time, just to listen to what I have to say or to watch the video and uh, really connect on that and those uh, important events throughout the week. And of course, right now, with everything that is happening in the world with coronavirus, um, we are living in crazy times. The mayhem out there is it's out of this world, something that I have never seen in my lifetime, uh, which, you know, I'm in my 40s, so... I wouldn't say that I'm that old, but at the same time, you know, in 40 some years, I have never seen this type of situation, you know, in a global scale. Of course, things like this happen around the world in different areas. Uh, but right now, this is in such a scale where every country is pretty much in lockdown and, um, you know, things are affected the way we do certain things. The economy is affected and it's going to affect, you know, billions, trillions, trillions of dollars all over the world are going to be affected by this economy. Unemployment is going to skyrocket. The recession is going to hit many, many countries. It's already hit in so many countries. And of course, the health crisis has really showcases a lot of the situation we live in in this world. And sometimes I feel primarily now, and I don't, I don't want to be polit political, but I want to say, share this. I feel that sometimes in this world we think about, about nationalistic boundaries. A lot of people think about, you know, as long as we're okay in our little part of the world will be fine you know we don't care about what's happening around the world but anything can anything that happens in, in one part of the world affects this part of the world whatever happens in china affects us whatever happens in italy affects us whatever happens in europe and africa whatever happens in the u.s we are so interconnected in a way that everything affects us all um you know anything that could happen anything that happens in a remote island in the pacific is going to have a, a pretty much a domino effect in the economy for the entire our world so yeah it is scary you know we live in a scary times um and of course you know one of those economies or one of those industries that have been affected is the entertainment industry and of course you know this uh podcast i talk about entertainment because it's pretty much part of our lives it's something that we do you know be beyond doing the normal thing of work and of course we like to be entertained because life is not all about just work it's about also fun but the entertainment world, primarily the the cinematic world, the, the the movies, have been affected big, big time, and a lot of changes are coming for this. And primarily, a lot of movies have been delayed. Uh, so many movies I was looking forward to, um, and we're going to in this podcast today. We're going to talk about those movies, and of course. Uh, what is happening and uh, what is the, the future, how the future looks right now for the movie industry because I've never seen this. I never in my lifetime I've seen movies to be pretty much stop, you know, on their tracks, not being released. This is the first time in forever. And of course, it's making changes where a lot of these companies, a lot of these um, uh, studios are switching to, in this case, to digital format and how that is going to affect the future. Yes, some of those prices are ridiculous and we're going to talk about it, but I feel that um, it's going to have a, a, a long-standing effect. That we're going to see that. We're going to see the dead of a lot of movie theaters. We're going to see that. I can I can predict that. Uh, a lot of those uh, movie theaters are going to have to close, you know, and uh, we're going to see more digital format. Um Primarily in the, in, in, in the first world, and of course, it's going to affect other parts of the world. But before we get into it, let's, quite, uh, let's look at some of the movies uh, that have been delayed. First of all, Bloodshot came out no long ago. I was on a trip to Texas picking up my daughter to come to see us. So I, that weekend, I didn't have the chance to watch the film. So I was thinking, yeah, we can watch it later on. I came that week. I was a bit kind of like tired because of the trip, spending time with my daughter as well. So I didn't, you know, say I'm going to wait a couple of days. And of course, everything blew out of proportion. Uh, my father-in-law had to have a surgery. So my, my wife had to leave, you know, all of that. You know, it, 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 think many things happened. My car broke down and that. So I didn't make it to the movie theater. Then the movie theater is closed now. Of course, it's, it's been closed for a while. So I didn't get a chance to watch the film. And I wanted to review it because, you know, I was looking forward to the film. Although I have seen some reviews and the movie sucks. You know, that's what they say. I'm going to wait until it comes out, of course, again. Or if they reopen the movie theaters, I'm going to watch it. And then I can give you a real uh, review of the film. 
um, on my, uh, in this case, in my main channel here on YouTube, um, JP Sour Reviews. But, uh, you know, and I was not really expecting it much. And um, so I'm disappointed because I really wanted to watch the film. And I want to support this type of film because I would love to see more superhero stories beyond just Marvel or DC. Um, and definitely the Valiant comics, the Valiant universe is also a big universe in comics. So I was really looking forward to it. Uh, it didn't work out. It came out now. Of course, you can uh, now purchase it or you can um, get it immediately on digital. But it's like $20, I think, just for rent or something. I don't know. I haven't really watched it. I was looking at going through, strolling through Voodoo and I saw it. And I said, okay, because they couldn't make it because everything that happened so fast, they now they release digitally. But I'm not sure if I want to pay $20 for a film that is not that good. Even, and I've seen some films that went straight to digital right away. You can have uh, access to it. But they're charging you $20 for the films. And to me, it's like, uh, if you're going to rent them, it has to be better than $20, in my opinion. I don't think it's the price is okay for that. I feel that, and I saw so many movies that were supposed to be released. Now they are already on release uh, digitally. But the price is still too high, and I don't think it's convincing enough for someone to jump into a film that you haven't watched, because I, I buy films. First of all, I purchase films that I already watched in the movie theater. If I like the film, I'm willing to pay the money. If I don't like the film, you know, then I don't purchase the film. Or I purchase it later on in a, some type of special discount on a Black Friday or even on digital uh, format when they go into the $5 bin or something on digital. You know, they're $5 a film. I buy it for $5. It's fine. But to pay $20 full price for something that definitely is not that good, I don't see it. And it's something that I haven't watched yet. So I, I'm not depend I don't like to depend on people's reviews. I like to make my own mind. I share my reviews. Doesn't mean that you have to follow what I say in my channel because everyone is different. Your opinion might differ from my opinion. So it's not like, you know, it, I'm, I like to listen and watch other people's reviews, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to let that review dictate what I want to do uh, or my opinion. You know, at the end of the day, I'm my own person. So I have to make my own mind. You know, I share my views, respectfully disagree with other people's views. But my, at the end of the day, it's my view, it's my review, and it has nothing to do with other people's reviews. So, I, I don't know. I feel that on the digital side, they need to get better at it in the sense that if you want to entice people to go all digital now, then you're going to have to give better prices. I would say, I would say, maybe it's a brand new movie, perhaps $10, even for rent, you know, $10 of a brand new movie that is in the movie theater. That makes sense, uh, but not at that price. Uh, of course, they're going to say, well, a lot of people are going to watch it. Yes, but you know you want to entice people to watch this film because at the end of the day, the movie theaters, the studios, don't get that much money when they, you know, the people pay their tickets, they get a portion of that for people to go to movie theaters. So it's not that much. It's like they want to eat the whole cake. They bake the cake and they want to eat it all by themselves. You know, by twenty dollars, they're really going to crazy when there's no physical side on it. Where you know, technically everything is just, you know, pretty much income. There's only a portion that goes to Voodoo, but primarily everything goes to them. You know, they're the ones keeping the most of the money. They're profiting pretty much just from digital, you know, without really having, you know, have no physical copy, none of that. So I feel that in that case, we st they need to manage their prices. They, 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 they're too hungry for money. And they are really pricing themselves out, you know, in the way that, you know, they are pricing it too high. People are not convinced, you know, people are still not convinced with digital. You know, we still live in a physical world and uh, people still want physical. So although digital has done strides, you know, in, in, in gaming and also in the movie in the, the entertainment world through streaming, people still want to have something that is physical. So I feel that in that end, I think they're making the bad decision. So definitely Bloodshot, I'm going to have to wait until the price drops or until it comes out on Blu-ray, DVD, whatever, when I can rent it for a better price. And then I'll uh, share my review. But so far, based on other people's opinions, the movie's not that great. So it's not like you're wasting your time. Or I'm sorry, not wasting your time. It's not like you are uh, losing sleep. You should lose sleep or you're losing something so important in your life that you know, you're going to miss. You're not missing anything. So... It is what it is. But, of course, a lot of the movies have been moved. Um, 
have been uh, pushed back in a way that is, uh, you know, like unheard of or haven't seen before. So technically all the movies all the way till May now have been moved. There's a couple of movies that still remain on the, uh, they still they haven't moved the dates, but I'm sure they're going to move them. But primarily all the movies here till May and even some mov movies from June were moved. Uh, so... You know, a lot of movies actually from June were moved. So uh, we know, f you know, from begin from from before, we know the first movie that was moved was was No Time to Die that was moved back to November 25th, which I think is a better time. But definitely there were push, and they moved the dates. And um, really looking forward to that film. I'm a big James Bond fan, and I love uh, in this case Craig as James Bond, and I feel that this as a farewell uh, in this case for him as the you know the. The, the actor portraying the character I feel that it's, it's so necessary so yeah I love the movie it's a bummer that it was moved but at least we have a concise day which is November um, other movies that were moved like the, in this case the, the Fast and the Furious what 9 that was moved all the way to next year I don't lose sleep on that one because actually that really looked like garbage to be honest that franchise needs to die uh, needs to die and I think they just they milking it too much that to the point that if people want to watch it is because they you had nothing better to do you know sometimes you have nothing better to do so it, watching a movie is something that you do just to kill time but in my opinion i feel that yeah, i don't want to support a franchise that it just lost track of what it was and I, I, that's one that I, I don't care they move it they can cancel it it's, i'm not gonna sleep stay any sleep over it i think that's it you know the first couple of films were fine but then of course everything else that happened afterwards is just hilarious it is hilariously bad it's worse than sharknado or it's worse than all those type of films you know just like that point there's so many that you just don't care about um wonder woman that was one that i was looking forward to was moved from i think june to august and uh, august 14 uh great i was looking forward to that film but understandable it, it, even though in june uh, a lot of movies still stand. Um, I feel that they decided to move it to a much better date because right now there's a lot of uncertainty with other movies that have been actually delayed, you know, when they're going to end or when they're going to air them. So they want to give themselves more time uh, and also uh, let everything cool down a bit. Um, but definitely I'm looking forward to the film. I think the Wonder Woman, uh, the first Wonder Woman film was a great film. And one that, to my opinion, was at the highest tender of DC, perhaps one of the best of DC. When we talk about, you know, people always say Joker was one of the best films, but Joker is more like an Elseworlds story. It's uh, the story of a psychopath that is pretty much named Joker. That's all it is, or call himself Joker, but not necessarily has real connection with Batman stories. But it is, you know, people are going to disagree with that. Um, but I really enjoy Wonder Woman because it is a superhero story through and through. It just has the perfect good rest is the best is the perfect recipe for superhero stories so they did a fantastic job so really looking forward to that film um not so disappointed i would say because at least we have a date and uh it pushed you know they push it back just like two months um so uh, it's better than have no real date you know because a lot of these movies have no date and these are the movies here that have been pushed back that i feel that um well i was looking forward to mulan was supposed to be released I think this weekend that is pending they don't have a date uh, and of course because uh the the center of this film of course is china uh or everything is a, it has a chinese theme of course um they were pushing for uh, a chinese release you know for them to be very clear in china but now that the the movie has been pretty much stuff and under in its tracks for now uh, waiting for everything to cool down primarily in china and of course then the rest of the world then of course um that's one film that um I was really looking forward to it. Uh, I wouldn't say that I'm I'm a huge fan of Disney like musicals, but this is not filmed as a musical. I hope at least the trailer doesn't show that. And um, it is a live adaptation, um, and I'm glad because I don't like live adaptations. I'm not crazy about live adaptations, to be honest with you, particularly when they have musicals. Uh, <laughs> but I feel that in this situation. Uh, the film looks great, and I'm looking forward to it. And, of course, the Chinese setting, Chinese actors and actresses. So, definitely, it's a good film, um, in my opinion, for what I've seen in the trailers. The trailers have been great. So, yeah, looking forward to the film. But that's right now. It's pending. They don't have a date, which is a bummer. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be released. Uh, the next movie that was also moved was The New Mutants. Um, look, I would say that I, I wasn't looking forward to The New Mutants. Uh, I love the characters. I love the comics, of course. Uh 
But I don't know. It just the vibe of that that trailer wasn't. Um, I wasn't too keen. It was kind of like a horror style type of thing. Well, the New Mutants had a lot of horror mystic elements in the comics, but not necessarily to the point that I felt that um, this trailer was very concise. Of course, this is some of the remnants that came from Fox that had nothing to do really with, uh, in this case, with Marvel or the MCU, which to me is a bummer. I, I was really looking forward for this film to be canceled, to be honest with you, the same way they canceled Gambit. But um, they decided to go through, maybe because, the, you know, because the production was already so far ahead and, you know, they've been planning this movie for many years. They push it back. But in my opinion, it's going to be kind of like, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look okay. You know, it looks fine for what it is. Not better than the last X-Men film. So I feel that if he, if he comes out, it's not going to be that. Some people are going to love it because they love that type of like dark elements of it. But to me, it just felt generic. Yeah, the trailer felt generic. But right now it's pending. It's a movie that has been cursed for so long because they have planned so many release dates and none of them have really pan out. So, um, but, you know, it's another film that, you know, in many ways has a superhero theme and something that I like to support. But right now, we don't know when this is going to come out or when it's going to be released because with everything that happened with this pandemic, it's just it's been pushed back. So that's another one that really suffer because of it. Now, the next one is a bummer. It's a Black Widow. We're looking, I was looking forward to Black Widow. Right now, it's pending. Um, they don't know when it's going to be released. Uh, really looking forward to that. The trailers were awesome. Uh, I love uh, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, she's not only a beautiful woman, she definitely portrays the, 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 the Black Widow really, really well. So really looking forward. I love the action, the comedy on the trailer. It looks on point and really was looking forward to watch the Taskmaster. Um, unfortunately, that's another one that has been cut. Uh, we don't know a date. They haven't released a date yet. Um, Disney hasn't been really forthcoming on it, and but we'll see. I don't know when it's going to push back. It gives us a little bit of breathing room, I would say, for the next couple of months. We're not going to watch really many movies, so that means that maybe I can start watching more stuff that I, I need to watch on live stream. Um, you know, a lot of stuff that I haven't really watched in different uh, networks. In this case, with Disney Plus, and of course, every everyone else. But um, definitely that's one that also was cut. Um, uh, Scoob, uh, Scooby-Doo film. I was looking forward to that film. Love the, the animation, love Scooby-Doo since I was a kid. That one is pending, doesn't have a date. Um, that's another film. That thing has been postponed a couple of times. It's been in, in works for, for a couple of years now. Um, but this time the trailer looks so great. I love the trailer, it looks fun. Looks the type of film that I can take my nephew to watch. Um, but now, you don't know. It's another one that is being cut for now. It's been it's still pending. They don't have a date. It's just been, it's been postponed. Now there's another film that has nothing to do with superheroes, but I was looking forward to it. Uh, with Amy Adams is the Woman in the Window. I like this type of thriller films, kind of mysteries. Uh, this is the type of film that has been do done before. It's not the first time I've seen a film like this. A woman that is actually uh, witnessed a murder, but she's unable to um, to leave her home. Of course, this is a copy of so many films. Uh, rear window and all that so it's it's something that we have seen before but i love these films and i love amy adams and i love the, the premises of it i was looking forward to it uh, and so far that film is also being postponed um another one top gun maverick uh a lot of people were looking forward to this film of course in what that july also pending right now they don't know because of course they're pushing movies back and there are a lot of movies are stopped to be released they have to push dates so they don't know when this is going to happen so right now it's pending it shows us pending they don't know when the date it's going to come um definitely it's a bummer because although i was never really crazy about top gun the original top gun i've always liked tom cruise and i enjoy tom cruise films you know he has action on him you know he's a he's a good actor he's a big cuckoo but he's a good actor and um, love to see him in films. So definitely, we'll, this is a film that looked good. The, cine, the cinematics and the, the trailers look great. And I love those cinematics. I love the, the scenes, the planes, all of that. It's something that I enjoy. So this one, that again, is also pending. Now, also another film that I was looking forward to, uh, Minions, The Rise of Gru. That one is also being postponed. There's no date for that. Uh, another film that I uh, would love to take my nephew Right now, there's another one. I wasn't crazy about the previous Minions film, but this one had, I don't know, it felt good. Uh, I don't know, the trailer looked good, so uh, it's, it's what it is. But there's a lot of films, of course. Right now, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty about it. 
uh, in May, you still have Ar Artemis Fall. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be uh, pushed back. Still showing up as May 29 as a date. Uh, in June, you also got Greyhound. It's a film that I'm looking for, historical background with Tom Hanks. It it's still set up for June 12th. Soul is another film from Pixar. Looking forward to that. It still says June 19th. But then all the movies from July, you got Free Guy, Ghostbusters, Afterlife, they haven't been changed. Ten, it's a film that I'm looking forward to watch, July 17, The Jungle Cruise, July 24, and more views, July 31st. All those films, so far, they seem to be untouched. Uh, but of course, everything, it's, you know, you know, we have to wait and see. We don't know, because there's a lot of things right now that are very uncertain. So yeah, a lot of movies have been pushed back, uh, which really has allowed, the, in this case, the streaming services to shine. I, I was looking and reading some uh, articles online where you're talking about the day, the numbers are staggering. Uh, people have been streaming a lot. Um, people have been playing a lot of games. A lot of people are spending more time watching Disney Plus, uh, Netflix, Vudu, Hulu, all of those services. They've been they've been overwhelmed in, in some ways because of the quality they have to reduce some in some places they have to reduce even the quality of their stream because of course they have so many people really crowding uh, the server so it's just amazing to see how the world has evolved and how uh digital like i was saying earlier is becoming the the center stage unfortunately um through all these movies of course studios can always the, the, at the end of the day the studios can survive you know studios will survive you know they're multinational companies with billions of billions of dollars on investment um they simply they can shell a movie for even a year and be okay with it because that's just money that they're investing for a better time it's kind of like a, a savings and of course they get a lot of tax cuts for all of that stuff they do the people that are suffering are they're going to suffer are the movie theater chains and particularly not only the movie theater chains but like cinemark which they also get affected and a lot of them they have franchises um, but the, the small movie theaters, the local movie theaters are the ones that are suffering the most, are the ones that are going to suffer the most because they're closed by mandatory shutdowns. They cannot open, you know, if they don't open, they cannot pay their employees and they don't, if they don't open, of course, they cannot pay their own bills. You know, they have bills to pay mortgage, all the services, um, you know, if they don't have the money, you know, and if they cannot survive, ultimately they have to close doors. And unfortunately, as long as this it gets prolonged, it's going to affect this small businesses, local movie theaters. And there's so many areas, so many parts in the country, like people think of the United States, they sometimes they think outside of the United States, they think about New York and Los Angeles, this big metropolis. They think about San Francisco, but the most poor Americans live in rural America. And there's so many places in rural America where there's, you know, only a movie theater, perhaps a tiny little movie theater in the middle of a nowhere that service, you know, not only one county, but a couple of counties and people come from, they can drive 45 hours, 45 minutes or to an hour just to go to the movie theater or even more. And they do it. So this small little movie theaters, if they're closed, but depending on the laws of the state, it depends on the economy and no movies showing up because everything has been, uh, you know, halted, you know, everything is pushed back. Of course, they're not making any money. And if they're not making any money, of course, ultimately, they have the affects the bottom line. They have to close doors. So definitely we're going to see a lot of repercussions in that hand. And um, to be honest with you, there is something that even though digital is a great format, uh, there's something that you cannot... Um, replicate with digital which is the feeling the sensation of going to the movie theater uh, it's not about just going to the movie theater it's not about the prices of the movie theater it's about the fact that you go into a place you sit down in the dark and a nice screen and just the feeling the emotions the smells the sensations that are produced just going there you know buying popcorn buying soda you know candy and sitting there and enjoying a movie with your loved one with your friends family or just by yourself it's just a feeling of nostalgia that brings so many memories and people do it all the time you cannot replicate the same thing at home watching even if you have the nicest 4k television with a nice screen even you have your own personal movie theater which I'll, not everyone has but if you do whatever it doesn't feel the same way even if you do popcorn in the microwave it doesn't feel the same way so all of that is part of that nostalgia the same as when blockbuster went out of business and you know yeah blockbuster was a pain sometimes but there was a feeling or emo something about going to the movie in this case to blockbuster or the video rental place and just choosing all those tapes you know, VHS and all that and of course then the disc the DVDs and choosing all of that and you know going home and watching you know movies you know it was an experience that you didn't get anywhere else 
And uh, now that that experience is now gone and we live in live streaming, it seems like our life has become more sedentary and situations like this are pushing for sedentary things, which is at the end, the sadness of this illness is that even though people already are hermits, because I'm a hermit in my home, but now people are pushed to work from home to stay away from people. And this is really creates a riff into a social interaction. And um, it's something that we still got to see and is we're going to see the effects, but definitely it's something that, I consider because to me going to movie theater is an experience in itself. One of those experiences that I personally enjoy and not being able to do it is going to be not only um, financially costly for the economy, but it's also is going to be costly emotionally for a lot of people like myself that love that experience. I'm not that I'm not that type of person. A lot of people have a lot of social lifestyles. You know, they like to go to the to the bars, they like to go to the restaurants, hang out with friends, with drinks. You know, uh, you know, and they love that environment, that experience. To them, that kind of fulfills their lives. They like to watch sports. They like to do certain things. One of the things that I personally enjoy, I enjoy going to the movie theater, and I feel that that's one that is going to be affected. It is it is already affected by it, and is definitely going to cost a lot um, but definitely when you see this push on digital of course it's good in one way but at the same time it being the only way it's not the way that I want things to be because at the end of the day you don't own these movies at all when you buy them digitally you just kind of like pay rent for them or pay a fee to own to keep it as long as the digital service is alive and um, you know and but at the same time they dictate the prices you know Disney Plus is good to have them to watch all those Disney films, but you don't own any of those films, you know, and as long as you keep paying, you can watch them, but once that service is done or once you don't pay, then you lose access to all that content, and Disney Plus is a great experiment right now, it's great, but what's gonna happen with Disney Plus comes out what happened with disney plus is not viable anymore and they decide to shut it down because it is possible it is possible just because disney is a multi-billion dollar business doesn't mean that it's not possible but in this case disney had other services before that were digital that they were shut down uh they didn't work out as well of course disney plus works better but doesn't mean that it's unique in that sense because the technology changes the way we watch films change the way things happen are changing constantly um I remember when uh, even Best Buy has own streaming services that, you know, I bought a lot of films through them and they shut down. Ultimately, some of those films, I was unable to transfer those films because they didn't give an option. Uh, the films that I had access to, it, I don't have access anymore. And to me, that was the stupidest thing. And I, I hated that. And of course, Voodoo has been a great service, but it doesn't mean that it will last forever. Uh, for Walmart, you know, Walmart's been trying to do other things in order to keep it alive by just doing free ad movies with ads and stuff like that. But, you know, you know, you never know, you know, in this case, the, the things where you were able to share movies with each other, uh, that was shut down. What was that ultraviolet thing? that was shut down as well. So now they don't have it anymore. Now it's movies anywhere. So you see that there's a lot of uncertainty, even though you might think, oh, this is gonna be a good business. You know, it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work the way it works, in the way it works because at the end of the day, you own nothing. You don't own anything in this. Um, you know, it's just the way it is. You know, you don't really own these films in digital format. And even if you watch them digitally, um, definitely those prices are really outrageous. Like I was saying earlier, like $20 to rent a film that just came out, it's not enticing. People are not enticed to do that because you don't get the same experience as the movie theater. So I don't feel that paying, you know, te technically pay-per-view, you know, it's going to make things better. But of course, that's just my opinion. Um, definitely that we are living in, in, in difficult times, you know, and now coming to the end of this podcast, I really want to share this with all of you. At the end of the day, life is more than entertainment. And sometimes we so fixated in the new thing that we don't really take time to enjoy the small things or the things that we have. So I would say right now, yes, everything, it sucks. You know, the fact that we cannot watch some of these new movies, but it's a great time to watch other movies. And I feel that there are plenty of movies to watch. I was thinking like, man, I, there's a lot of movies I haven't watched in years. Uh, I have a great collection, large collection of uh, Blu-rays and DVDs. It's time to watch them. Not only go to the live streaming services because I'm, you know, subscribed to all of them, Disney Plus, you know, Hulu, Voodoo, um, Netflix and so on, Acorn, so many others, Breakbox or whatever. So I can, Amazon Prime. So it's like I can watch all sort of things. But, you know, so it, this gives me time to watch a lot of those shows I haven't watched and uh, haven't really taken time. Like I was thinking, maybe I need to watch HBO too. Time to watch some of those shows that I haven't even reviewed. Maybe it's a good time to review some of the things. So yes, it's good at the same time. 
uh, but also watch a lot of movies that have been watching forever. A lot of it's time to dust some of those Blu-rays and watch finally some of those films or watch them after so many years and rekindle that love for them and maybe talk about them. So yes, uh, it is a good time for a lot of things. It, it depends how you see them. Of course, you see them from a bad perspective. Of course, people are gonna get hurt uh, and uh, through this economy. It's going to affect a lot of people. Uh, people are going to be unemployed. But also, it's a good time to to do things that we haven't done in a while while we stay home um, and watch those things and really maybe have some movie marathons or uh, you know TV show marathons. You know, we have that opportunity. So there are blessings that come with it, and also, of course, there are bad things that come with it. But sometimes it's the way we see them. Um, so right now, I definitely, I think I'm going to, uh, for the next couple of days or weeks, depending on how things last, of how everything lasts, uh, or how long it lasts, uh, I'm going to probably dedicate time to watch some films, and I'll review those in my main channel, um, and because it's a good time for it. Yeah, that's my opinion, of course. Uh, but what is yours? Are you what, how you, what are you doing? If you're watching this on YouTube, and you can leave a comment, or you're on Facebook, on Twitter, you can actually comment there too as well on the links. How are you passing the time? Are you watching movies? Are you disappointed in some of these movies? What movies were you looking forward to watch? And um, are you glad that you're taking a break right now and you can watch other things? Let me know. Let me know why you're watching. Let me know if you would like me to review something uh, in the channel, uh, on my main channel, in, in JPSR Reviews. Uh, I would like to hear it. Uh, give me ideas what to watch. A a any recommendations? There's a lot of things that I would love to watch or things that I really don't pay attention because a lot of uh, great shows. Uh, let me know what shows do you recommend me to watch in this time, during these days. Uh, I would love to hear it. Uh, I would like to hear it because definitely there's a lot of stuff and sometimes I don't even know where to start. So my friends, I want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this on YouTube. Um, please don't forget to like, to comment, and to subscribe to this channel. Uh, in this case, Age of Heroes podcast here on YouTube. But also to follow the podcast, to subscribe to the different platforms, whatever is your uh, pr platform of preference. And also to share it with your friends through social media. You can share that through Facebook, through Twitter. Um, they, wh whatever you do really helps this, uh, my podcast helps this channel uh, to success and you know, to, to live on. Uh, but I wanna say, uh, first and foremost, I wanna say thank you for taking time and thank you for that support. My friends, God bless you, have a great week and I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.